commentator Nick Powell. Bradford's Lee Duxbury wins the award for the Barclays Young Eagle of the Month for Yorkshire, chosen by Trevor Cherry, the former manager here at Bradford City, and confirmed by the England manager, Graham Taylor. And it's second place Grimsby wearing blue this afternoon, their change strip who get us underway, and you can rest assured that no one will be keener to do well here than Neil Woods, formerly a Bradford City player, suddenly found his scoring form again when he joined Grimsby Town on loan, now a full-time Grimsby player. Dermot, Childs, Huntington, good one-touch stuff from Grimsby, Reese, and that's a chance for Cunnington, goalkeeper did well. Sean Cunnington got in there, only got two goals this season, but he's always looking for the chance to steal forward from midfield. And Bradford have really got themselves in trouble here. Attempted back pass, and Cunnington was almost there before Tomlinson. Tomlinson did well. A chance for Bradford to break. Torpe. Duxbury. Abbott making the overlap outside him if he wants it. Four ahead of him. Here's Abbott. And Bradford playing with some confidence. Torpe's header. Wasn't very far wide. And he certainly found some space. Useful cross in and Torpe, watch how he gets away from the markers here. Not very far wide. Sinnott. Grimsby a little unsure whether to push out for offside or not. Fletcher got it away, not very far. Watson likewise. Childs looking for the goalkeeper, it's a bad ball, Torpe! And a good important tackle from Mark Lieber. Saved his side there as Torpe's foot swung in and he found the interception from Lever which saved I think probably a certain goal Gary Childs just didn't look played the ball straight into the path of Torfe and it's a perfectly timed challenge from Mark Lever Watson for Reese. McDermott supporting Watson again Childs has come inside Woods Cunnington, first touch let him down. Well, he should never have got the chance. Certainly the Bradford manager, John Doherty, will feel that his defence should have had that covered. And certainly Sean Cunnington found that he got a second chance. And he put it wide. Lever's challenge enough to ensure that there's no danger to Grimsby. <laughs> One by James. And Tracy, without looking, gave it straight to Childs, and Bradford could be in trouble here. He's got a deception by Oliver. Still Grimsby threatening. Reese. Dermott in support on the touchline if he wants him, goes inside for Woods. Watson, couldn't get him through to Gilbert. Cunnington! Oh, and the ball was spinning viciously from the right foot shot from Sean Cunnington. Spinning very well, but straight at the goalkeeper. Abbott. Torpy. Duxbury. Three ahead of him. Good run by Tracy. Lever stretches out one of those long legs. Duxbury thinks about the short throw for Abbott. Decides against it. Low by Lever. Abbott losing out to Cunnington. Here's Reese. And Reese gets the free kick. Good jobling. Probably the most improved. Grimsby Town player last season and he played partly in midfield Reese can he turn his man almost Cunnington well he's had more efforts on goal than anybody else so far Sean Cunnington let's see this one again Jobling's long free kick Reese and Sinnott tussling for it and a first time right foot effort from Cunnington in the end worldwide. Tinian. Carthy in there with Butcher. Just saves the ball going to the corner. Bradford still have it. Tracy. Tinian. He's the interception by Gilbert. Now then. Grimsby have three against two.
two. But Gilbert slows it down somewhat. Hit Reese. Grimsby still pressing though. Still four players pulled up. A useful goal ball for Watson. But a good challenge. Well timed. Robbie James back. Helping the defence. And Tommy Watson able to capitalise. Reese held the ball up very well this afternoon. Tony Reese for his supporting players. Here's Cunnington. Senate's interception. Gilbert's cross. Childs. Well, he's not the best header of the ball in the Grimsby team. He'd be the first. Lost the last four games away from home in the league. Forward by Cunnington. Here's Gilbert, chance of a shot. Always looked as though he was going to screw it just wide of that post and back. But it was certainly as good a shooting chance as it's been in the second half. He did everything right except the final shot. James challenging, beaten by Cunnington, who's had a good game. Childs asking Watson to run and McDermott is making an overlap down the right there's Childs doing it still down the touchline this is Reese. McDermott fighting for it Watson can he turn chance for Watson Tommy Watson it's Tommy Watson's first goal since the last time Grimsby Town were featured on goals on Sunday back in October. On that occasion it was a close range effort. On this one it was a goal worthy of winning a match. It's Bradford nil, Grimsby won. Cunnington forward. And it's beaten by Mitchell. Yorkies, what's the score? Is the chance from the Grimsby fans who are enjoying this thoroughly? Childs, still Childs, chance is here, and it must be. Dave Gilbert, ninth goal of the season, and how they're enjoying it. It always looked on from the moment Gary Childs got free in the penalty area. He's got that extra yard of pace, looked up, saw what the options were, and that's the best option. Way by James, the afternoon has got very cold, and it will feel colder for Bradford. As Grimsby have another free kick. And might pick up. A third goal to boost their goal difference even further. It's already good. Substantially better than South End, who led the table at the start of play. Here's Reese. Can he turn? Cunnington. It's the fourth or fifth attempt on goal that Sean Cunnington's had this afternoon. He doesn't seem to mind too much that that one didn't go in. The side, two goals to the good. Gilbert. Jobling. the whistle and Grimsby have ended their run of four successive away league defeats with a convicted victory Tommy Watson was the man whose goal made all the difference it had been a fairly sterile afternoon but his goal changed everything they got a second one and we have a final score that reads Bradford City nil Grimsby Town 2 Tommy it looked uh, a fairly sterile game until, until your goal but after that you looked very much the better side of it 
Yeah, we started to play more stuff, more confidence, obviously, throughout the team. And we just started to play better stuff and got things together. And now you hit the goal with your own foot. Yeah, well, I just cut inside and it was on my left foot. I had to go on my left foot and I flew in that. If you're going to have an off day against the team, any team in the third division, you're going to have a difficult time. But if you have an off day against one of the top teams, then you're going to have problems. Now, I felt from very early on in this game, this looks like no, no. But the difference was that they're a team that's been in the top two all the season long, and they sniffed the, the fact that they could actually win it. And they then took the initiative and they came in and they won it. Well, there's not a lot you can take when a team performs like that for you. Um, we did everything that, that is required to go into a super team performance. We defended well, competed very well, and the second half I thought our football was of a very, very high standard. It doesn't surprise me and the many regular Grimsby followers the way we played, particularly our light in the second goal, and the players did magnificently. It in Huddersfield, John Hell. Grimsby Town moved to the head of Division 3 with last week's victory at Bradford and the Mariners are back in West Yorkshire today with Tommy Watson, scorer of the first goal at Valley Parade, hoping to repeat the feat against Huddersfield. He was on the mark against them back in September when Grimsby won 4-0. The pitch good enough for the match to be declared on by referee Gerald Ashby and Huddersfield's attack today led by Phil Stant who completes his month on loan from Notts County a decision on a more permanent move will be made after the game Smith against McDermott once more and the fullback handles it well another cross coming over towards Roberts and the punch by Sherwood good enough to relieve the lines for Grimsby for the moment and O'Regan now feeds Simon Trevitt the first time ball in, it looks long, back post Roberts here's a great chance and spooned over the top by Robert Wilson but the first opening really created by either side of a shooting chance, Simon Trevitt hoisted it long it, Roberts has won a lot of things in the air this afternoon and he gets up well here, directs the ball down but the whistle had gone as you see before Wilson took the shot <laughs> only challenged Gilbert on the header and so Reese is unleashed now Watson oh that's a good ball as well Reese might just have too many around him so Cunnington belted in and a good try as well that's the best we've seen in the game so Sean Cunnington getting the first shot on the mark for Grimsby. It all started with little Gilbert's header, then Reese teed him up. Cunnington whipped it in low, and that could have taken a nasty bounce for Steve Hardwick. Well, it's a very tight game. A few chances so far. Grimsby coming forward now in numbers, but uh, it's well won by Charlton. And he finds Roberts. Stant. Charlton's done well again. He's had an impressive first half. Now it's Smith, two defenders up against him, so he lays it back for Charlton, Huddersfield off three, four, five men now in the area. Come to Marsden, and to Smith, driven up towards Roberts, who's good in the air again, here's a chance, Stant can't turn it, Marsden can! And a jump of joy from Chris Marsden. He got the winner last week against Fulham, and he's taken the Terriers ahead now against Grimsby. They enjoyed it and it was beautifully struck by Chris Marsden. It's only his third of the season. Smith, the important thing was how Roberts won it there. And then when the ball was headed, Stant just managed to touch it on, but Marsden curled it around into that top corner. And Chris Marsden strikes for Huddersfield Town ten minutes before the break. A very important break for him. Here comes Grimsby's McDermott. He's been as consistent as anybody for them this season, and here he is now, John McDermott. Good ball through for Woods, and Neil Woods is offside. He was in a perfect shooting position, but the flag had been raised. Charlton's won another good foray down the left. He really is a very confident player. I just feel, of course, on a tradition of producing good fullbacks. And he's here once more. When you think back to Ray Wilson and Bob McNabb, and here he is, Charlton! And he whistles it across there. Sherwood going down. 
What an impressive young fullback this is, Simon Charlton. He whipped that one over. And it was a difficult ball for Sherwood. And still a goal up. Ten minutes into the second half. But Gilbert for Grimsby. That's a good ball through for Gary Charles. Charles goes on and he breaks and that must be a penalty. But the referee says not. Well, Gary Childs can't believe it, I don't think. Grimsby's fans can't. It's a beautiful ball played by Gilbert. Now, let's have a look here. It was a bit of a lung. Childs goes on. Well, the referee says no penalty. Coming on for Grimsby in the number 12 shirt is Gary Bertles. And coming on for Huddersfield Town in the number 14 shirt, Ippi on Ura. There he is. Well, he's come on and scored a goal or two in his time. Balls up there for Bertles to win, and the back header, Bertles, his lever, and here's the chance, and it's going to be there, is it? Oh my word, it could not be closer from Gary Bertles, literally with his second touch on the first minute he was on, he could have equalised, lever posed a few problems, rebounded away from Watson, Bertles, and it's agonisingly wide. He's got all the time in the world to play it wide here to McDermott. Reese And for Childs. There's the cross. I think it's going to be too close to Hardwick. Oh, he's swept it in the bit and driven in. Off the other side of the bar by Watson. Well, everybody was looking to see if Hardwick had been fouled. The referee said not. And Grimsby surely can't come closer than that without scoring. Charlton does the sensible thing and puts the ball out of play. Look at this now. Hardwick comes for it. I thought he was going to claim it, but the presence of Bertles obviously put him off, and Tommy Watson smacked it against the underside. Well, he scored last week. He scored in the corner win against Huddersfield, but a shake of the head it tells you that he didn't score on this occasion. Bertles. Just run away from him. Charlton was put under pressure by Gary Bertles. The former England man. He had such a distinguished career with Nottingham Forest. A less happy time with Manchester United, of course. And the Regan comes away with it. Stamps going down the left on the orders up the right if he can find him. He does. Tomic's making an extra man up there too. Taken on again by a Regan. Trevitt tries to get past Jodley and does so. Trevitt, good run. Here's the second for Stamps. Maybe no, and has got the chance, and it's going out of the ground. Well, this was good work by Simon Travis, it really was, and it's a lethal ball he cuts back as well. Stamp was unlucky, it just came back off Lever, and you're uh, not really so lucky. Half the man on the near side, and Alan Buckley just pointing the way to his side. He led them out of the 4th Division last season and he's looking to lead them into the 2nd Division this time. But they're still a goal behind now. But the most important statistic is that Huddersfield are leading 1-0 here but Tony Reese has got it behind the defender. He can do it, he can't finish it. Now it's a penalty. Reese brought down. Penalty given against Huddersfield Town. And they have been walking on a tight rope in the last few minutes, no question about that. And this is going to be Grimsby's chance. The long ball, loop forward was going to be the one that unhinged them. And Simon Trevitt, all he could do was to bring Reese down in the eyes of the referee. And Watson equalises for Grimsby Town. Tommy Watson taking over the penalty taker's role with Dave Gilbert having been substituted. Strikes again, and he keeps up his record of having scored in all three matches featured on goals on Sunday at the main game this season. He 
Hayes is one of the three, of course, because it's from the penalty spot. So what an important goal from Tommy Watson, his fifth of the season. Is there yet Tommy for Huddersfield? They might have the last chance, Travick drives it in, Stamp comes in with Sherwood, he's as strong and tall and dependable as he's been all afternoon. And it's the final this Watson goal, it's one of the oldest cliches in football, but it really has been a game of two halves. Huddersfield taking the lead in the first half through Chris Marston, an excellently struck goal by him. But Grimsby came back in the second half and deserved the equaliser they got in the last ten minutes, driven in from the penalty spot by Tommy Watson. So the point of peace here is Huddersfield Town 1, Grimsby Town 1. Chris, what a spectacular goal. Yes, then. This is the third division's match of the season. Grimsby and Southend have never been out of the promotion frame since the start of it. Southend's bid launched on the goals of Brett Angel. He's got 23 already, and Dunfermline recently had a £300,000 bid for him rejected. Grimsby have ex-England striker Gary Bortles up front. Alan Buckley chooses him ahead of Neil Woods. And back after a two-month absence with a broken ankle, John Cockrell. He takes over from Tommy Watson, who's on the subs bench. And referee Neil Midgley has been to Blundell Park before this season and he'll never forget it. After the match with Swansea, he was actually locked in the ground, a story he uses to good effect on the after-dinner circuit. Berthels is up there, here's Cockrell, and it's just run through to the goalkeeper Samson. Cockrell comes from these big positions in midfield. And if he'd have got on the end of that one, I think it would have been 1-0. Kick up field and things have been just unable to get there before the keeper shield. That's what they want. a centre-back who had that opportunity. The striker might have done rather better with it. But straight from McDermott's free kick, it's a lovely little flick from Tony Reese. He is so deft in those situations. And Lever rather snatched at the opportunity. Well, you were playing head tennis there, aren't you? slipped out of your picture which meant that they were run down in terms of numbers for the moment and now here he is he gets to the point and brings his full kick but Brett Angel just couldn't keep his feet there so Dave Gilbert flying it in Lever was there but it's out by Austin Fitcher Bertles underneath this one here's Tony Reese the crossbar and even the referee jumped in the air. Tony Reese very unlucky. It's the closest either side has come. Puts his header back in. A lot of players mingling for it. Bertles with a touch there. Reese turning on it. And that's just how unlucky he was. It's a nice header from Benjamin, but straight to McDermott. South End skipper has played over 300 games for the club in two spells. This is Reese though, he's had his share of clubs too. And he's fought well here on Grimsby's behalf and Childs gets the cross over, the keeper's in trouble. Over the top from Lever. Well swung in by Gary Childs. Samson was in no man's land but Lever couldn't keep the header down. for Grimsby. This looks more promising. Here is Gilbert. Coming inside and out. Round one, inside two. Very quick Gilbert. Edge of the area. Pity from Grimsby's point of view that Gilbert hadn't got inside because he's a damn hand at taking penalties. And 
you have also seen Gilbert score from a free kick from this sort of area this season. That was against Bournemouth. This is another day. Bournemouth, we have five men inside Southend's penalty area. Looks like Cunnington or Gilbert, and it will be Gilbert, and it flashes it in and scores. Well, I did warn you, he can hit them. And Dave Gilbert goes into double figures for the season, his tenth goal. Sweetly struck indeed. Cunnington ran over it, and Gilbert knew exactly where he wanted to put it, and he followed his own instructions. And a great time to score, three minutes before the interval, and it's Grimsby 1, South End 0. Lever out as far as Austin. It's three men in the middle already, and here is one of them, Angel, Brett Angel! A cracking effort and a good stop from Steve Gilwood as well. Angel, the ace goal coach of the South End, showing him that one movement how dangerous he is he's come out of non-league football as potential only in the last 18 months and here it's a cracking effort Southend will have the words of manager David Webb to respond to in the second half who's leading 1-0 now attacking the pontoon end Grimsby's supporters are behind this goal, so uh, they'll be hoping to uh, suck one or two goals into that net. Long throw is aimed for Reese inside to Gilbert. And Reese with a really weird effort. Well, that would have been a quite extraordinary goal. Paul Sampson off his line, the ricochet favoured him, but what quick thinking by Reese there to loop the ball over Sampson, but unfortunately just over the bar too. Oh, Reese is very sharp today. Purple's lovely header on. Reese turned aside towards Cunnington. How it was that time. Yeah. Reese will get chased. He's like a greyhound, he's Tony Reese. Going to get away this time by Scully. Reese will accept that. Still they defend against another Grimsby corner. Gary Burkle's in for it. Well, it nearly crept in. Burkle hasn't scored this season. In fact, his last goals for Grimsby were in a hat-trick at the end of last season against Wrexham, but he's close enough here. Gilbert with a deep and penetrating ball. Up goes Burkle's. The goalkeeper rather flat at it from Burkle to hit it the left side. Just an angle to get out of their own half for the moment. Leave it to me, says Kevin Jobling. So Gilbert does just that and takes up his position on the edge of the area to receive the ball. Jobling now might play it in. So might Gilbert. Got past the first man. Past the second. Got past uh, the recovering Austin well. Jobling came in and it sliced away. Funnily enough, off the boot of the defender Austin. It's together. Benjamin held things up nicely, Ansar, just a late back for Tilson, Ansar once more, and Sherwood stretches and saves, and the Ansar got a hat-trick last week in the Leyland Daft Trophy against Torquay, but could do no more here really than put in a toe-poked effort, which was never going to beat Sherwood. And again they'll stay over in that corner and just waste up the seconds. Mr. Midgley points to the dressing rooms. Three valuable points won here by Grimsby Town in their promotion chase. They've inflicted defeat on South End, their arch rivals, by a goal to nil. The only goal scored by Dave Gilbert in the first half, but Grimsby have really merited their success. Grimsby Town won, South End United nil. We're now into the critical part of the season, so far as promotion's concerned. How do you rate your chances now? I think the critical part is about the middle of May when, when everything's about been decided, John. But the only thing I would guarantee is we try and play the game in an entertaining fashion. Uh, 
And all I will say is that nobody, nobody and no club wants to be successful more than this football club here. And everybody will do all in their power to make that the case. South End and Rock. In his Reese inside the area. Watson now. Might get the ball in. He's got on the outside of the defender. It's the first corner of the game is Grimsby. John Cockrell. It's a good in swinger. And the referee, I think, says it's struck a fight. Well, drama inside Birmingham's penalty area there. Straight from Cockrell's corner. Don't forget the score direct from that recently. The ball hitting the crossbar, not quite forced over the line. Still it's Grimsby. Here it is, coming through from Reese. Flicked it over the top of the crossbar with the outside of his right boot. It's an eventful first attack, really, from Grimsby. After soaking up a lot of pressure, they won this corner. And drifting in from Cockrell, let's see if we can sort out what happened under that crossbar. First of all, the ball struck the bar, and then as Gilbert tried to force it through, there were appeals, but unavailing. A nice header on for Tony Reese. Twisting, turning, finding Watson. He might have just over stretched, but Cockrell nicks it back through. Here's a chance for Reese. Thomas bravely down at the feet of Tony Reese. And both stay down. That was a genuine chance created in the Birmingham penalty area. Watson, I thought, had just overdone it, but the little clip through there from Cockrell, totally missed by Matthews, and Reese had to go for the ball. Thomas was valiant. It's a blow for them, this, because Tony Reese has got 11 goals this season. He's going to have to come off to be replaced by Mark Smith. We should sign it for 50,000 pounds from Huddersfield Town. Woods meet liaison once more. Gilbert inside the area. It's going to come down here. From Mark Smith. Well, the last goal he scored was for Huddersfield. And it was a winner at South End back in January. So we'd love to see him get on the score sheet today. As Grimsby pursue their formation dream. Gilbert, chance to deliver it in. The header back is towards Cunnington. For the back footer. Gilbert with another chance to deliver the ball in. Which he does, and here's the header. Off the bar for the second time in the match. Smith again, getting in there with the header. Flipped off the top of his head. Cockrell is there too. Good ball in from Gilbert. Smith's header. And Varian survive a second scare. Up from Gilbert. Smith taking it on the chest and feeding it wide to Watson. Two defenders in front of him. Tommy Watson. So he tries through the middle instead. Now it's Cunnington. Gilbert slips. They've just got a bit of anxiety out there perhaps. Gilbert still there. Comes again Gilbert inside the area. Juggling shot. Oh, by Thomas. Going juggling, he's got figured on the score sheet since the goal against Gillingham last October, 89 and 80 season. So he flipped over even before that and he couldn't beat Thomas. Straight away it comes back inside Birmingham's half. Cockrell benefited there, the ball actually hit him on the head. But it's not right of Watson. The ball in is a good one. Go for the head of the Woods. Straight at Thomas. Notable defensive performance by the Blues. They've rarely threatened anything in attack. They've come here to fool at Grimsby. They've done it well. <laughs> Rogerson was there twice. Now yeah, it's Smith trying to check it. They're trying to get Richard with an unusual ball. And it was an orthodox. They just need to be a little bit more direct, perhaps, Grimsby. Here's a chance now then, Smith. Up against Matthews and the ball in is to Gilbert. It's to Cunnington rather the cross. Oh! So close. Neil Woods needed a mere touch to it. He couldn't get it. Clarkson's so 
Swindon 2 in. Lovely run made by Cunnington inside the penalty area. You get past Beer, straight across goal, and it needed the nearest deflection. He didn't get it from Neil Woods, but it's still a Grimsby corner. Short for Childs, for Gilbert. On the left foot, it's in! Saved for Gilbert by Thomas. Nothing has got past Martin Thomas so far. His bar has been struck twice. Woods literally a toe poke away and then he saves from Bertels here. So little time left. The group is to try and get the vital winner. It really would be today with Southend losing last night. We'll get some odd results at this stage of the season to give me such a boost to the promotion campaign if Grimsby could get a winner. Any time will do. Juggling in. Oh! Turned over the top by Cockrell. The long, long throw there. Might have unhinged Birmingham. Berkeley's tussling for it. Gilbert's here coming. Juggling smacked it in. And on the instep, Cockrell over. But it's a repeat of the scoreline at St Andrews in October. A frustrating afternoon for Grimsby Town, who suffered from the early loss of Tony Reese. And though they hit the woodwork twice, they couldn't find a way past Martin Thomas in Birmingham's goal. His best save won from Gary Bertles midway through the second half. It's one point that I'm sure Grimsby would have liked three on the day. So it ends Grimsby Town now, Birmingham City now. Well, I imagine that was a bit of a frustrating game to play in, in many ways because Birmingham obviously came here happy just to get away with the draw. Yeah, well, we're, we're all frustrated. Uh, at the end of the day, the, the games you could easily lose and we've got the points, we kept a clean sheet and uh, we've got to do the business on Tuesday. Now, Grimsby Town play their most important match for 10 years in Soccer Special. game here for 10 years. It's only 12 months since they and their fans were celebrating promotion from the 4th Division here at Blandville Park. Now they've arrived on the threshold of Division 2 with a brand of one-touch football that's attractive and effective. Three points against Exeter today will bring promotion for Grimsby, whose goal difference is better than their rival. Anything less could let in Bolton or Tranmere, who both play at home today. Well, obviously, you could go up by not winning today, but presumably the mood is to go out and get three points. Oh, it's essential, really, we go out and win. Um, we can't rely on other teams to help us, um, so we've got to win ourselves. It looks like being one of the biggest third division crowds of the season to see if Grimsby can make it on a day of high tension. Your match commentator, John Hell. If there's one man Alan Buckley desperately wanted in his starting lineup today, it's Tony Rees. The striker who holds the attack together so well has missed the last three matches and Grimsby haven't won any of them. Well, Rees is fit and wears the number nine shirt. This is Buckley's choice. The inclusion of Rees means Gary Bertels drops out. He has a muscle strain that joins Mark Smith on the substitutes bench. And this is largely the formation that's kept Grimsby in the top three all season. Gordon Hobson is well remembered in this part of the world after spells with Grimsby and Lincoln City. Today he takes his place in this Exeter City side nominated by Terry Cooper, the former Leeds United and England star. Trevor Morgan, who also coaches the team, swapped places with assistant manager Steve Neville, who's on the bench. Cooper had only 13 pit players to choose from. 
Kelvin Morton from Bury St Edmunds took charge of another important third division promotion game last week. Southend against Cambridge. They've both gone up. Let's see if Grimsby can join them. And if you believe in omens, when Grimsby Town won promotion under Lloyd McManamy back in 1972, Exeter City were the opposition then. Mark Cooper, now there's a familiar name, the manager's son. He's a youngster, 22 years of age, and he's in the side today, playing despite a stress action So badly off Exeter City after players. Grimsby's real problem in recent weeks has been the scoring of goals. They failed to score in four of their last five matches. They've won only one of the last six, too. So they're not exactly in form coming to this last day of the season. Such an important day, as we stressed at the start. And all ears today will be on radios, listening for the results of Bolton and Tampere Rovers in particular. A reminder, all games we have to do is win this one. If they win, they're up. Then, but the referee said not on that occasion. So from Gilbert. Interception and a push by Reese on Richard Dryden. And for this one, Sean Taylor, the uh, tall centre back, will go up to join the likes of Trevor Morgan in there. Jones isn't small either. And it is up towards Taylor, who loses out to Lever, but it uh, falls quite handily for Gary Marshall. He plies the ball in. Taylor was still up there. Lever out. This now is Scott Hiley, who drills in the shot, but again, good positional play from Steve Sherwood. Reese lost out on the aerial challenge, but Grimsby still won the possession, and Cunnington tries to get through the middle, and it's Hobson who plays in midfield these days. Well remembered up here, here, of course, is a striker, Gordon Hobson. Cunnington was trying to get in behind him. That captain's arm that always looks like a huge elastoplast. Marshall with the header, Morgan. But uh, Futcher read that again and plays the ball forward for Reese. The one against one situation, but the flag had been raised. Taylor and here's a chance for Exeter they could get the first goal and the shot is whipped wide by Murray Jones the first time Grimsby have been in trouble but they really were here with the ball falling nicely for Jones who turned it onto the left foot and he should have done better Challenged by Cooper on Cockrell because the dislike of the referee. It does bear a resemblance to his dad, Terry, doesn't he? The long ball for Grimsby and Reese looked to be standing offside. He was. He throws his arms out wide to dispute it, but I'm afraid he was offside. You can sense the tension running through this Grimsby side. That's why they need the first goal. At the moment is Exeter on the attack. Good clearance though to Woods who turns it back inside. Now there are chances. Cunnington just able to keep the momentum of the move going by swinging it up left again for Woods. He'll take them on now. Reese is in the middle. Here he is. The little back here for Neil Woods. Great save, but Reese has the chance to put the ball in the net. But already the whistle had sounded. And such a shame for Grimsby. It was a lovely move. And that would have done them the world of good too. Woods and Reese combining, that was a lovely back heel. That was the first division quality. The goalkeeper made the save and Reese put the ball in the net. And I'm not quite sure why that was disallowed. Is it a foul on the goalkeeper? I mean, 
Woods was in an offside position by the time Reese uh, struck the ball into the net, but he certainly wasn't interfering with play. But Alan Buckley will be bitterly disappointed with that uh, goal being ruled out because it would have done them so much good. It would have just taken away a little of the tension. He looks rather glum at the moment, doesn't he? Taylor got it well to that, and that's not a bad ball forward again. It will encourage Reese to give chase, and the goalkeeper Miller's gone over there too, and will put the ball into the crowd. There's no more he could do. The pitch looking excellent, and again, that's a tribute to the groundsman here. Frank Bridge, Reese in the penalty area. Deft of foot, but Grimsby need a goal. Cam Gilbert comes you one up. We've not seen much of him. Here's a good ball. Here's a chance as well for Cunnington. Rather sliced it. But Grimsby still very much on the attack. And they'll have a throw in. Cunnington. They play these short balls around. Here's Dave Gilbert. And Gilbert into the side netting. But these little back clicks in the penalty area are unhinging and unsettling the exit to defence no end. And it's all because Tony Reese is back in the attack. That was a delightful touch from him. And Gilbert got the shot in and he was oh so close. It's already been the most productive season in terms of goals for Dave Gilbert. He's got 14, which is best ever talent. Reese. Again it's the back heel, and again it opens him up, and then he's taken out of play, he's coming to, and this might well be a booking for Taylor. And suddenly Grimsby are finding a better rhythm. I think Taylor's going to get away with it. But Grimsby are just finding their most fluent form now, this looks promising. And it's all down to the fact that Tony Reese is back in attack. He holds the line together so well. Futcher must be offside. He's not offside. Cockrell scores for Grimsby! Well, they don't care whether he was offside or not. Questions are being asked on the exit side. But 20 minutes into the game, John Cockrell has scored a priceless goal for Grimsby Town. Butcher hoisted it over the top. Now he looks to be standing alone. He breasts it down, sweeps it past Miller, and Grimsby have the lead. Let's have another look from Butcher. I'm not quite sure who was playing him onside, if anybody, but Cockrell didn't care about that, and it's 1-0 to Grimsby. The dream of promotion is very much alive again. There is Terry Cooper, the animated one on the exit bench. Alongside him, uh, Steve Neville, on the extreme left. He's the uh, assistant manager. And the other substitute is Darren Robotham. Marshall will be pursued here. He's been forced all the way back to the halfway line. But still want to chase for Jones. Morgan, Taylor's up there, there's his header, a looping one though, and although Taylor's got a few goals in the last few weeks, three in the last seven matches in fact, he never looked like scoring with that one. Positively done, and Woods nicks it back for Gilbert. The ball, man up the middle was Cunnington. It's come back down though for Jobling. Cunnington still in here, trying to chest it down for the shot by Reese, which slews away from the side of his boot. And a whistle had gone anyway from Mr. Morton to say that uh, it's a free kick for Exeter. And again, Sean Cunnington was setting a captain's example and getting up there alongside Tony Reese. Neatly. And then give it 
giving it away to Gilbert here. I'm not supposed to do that. He can really take advantage. Cockwell goes on. The man has already got one goal. Goes in to try and get another. And it's going to be run out of play by Taylor. And John Cockwell is so close to a second. He's actually scored two on two occasions this season against the Huddersfield in Reading. And this is how close he was to his second goal of this day. Wasn't very positive by the goalkeeper. Grimsby have got three men camped on the edge of that area. Two in the goal mouth alongside the keeper. As here it comes, and it was Cooper who got it out. To Watson. Played forward for Reese. Back for Watson and the ricochet. Again, just favoured Exeter. But Futcher strongly gets it back in there. And it's put away once more by Taylor. Good moments for Reese for Grimsby. How they could do with a second goal. Uh, lift the raft as if they do get one. Chance is still here, Cunnington, Woods back to Cunnington, driven in too hard, well I say that, I thought it was an attempted cross really, but Sean Cunnington cracked that one about two feet over the top of the Exeter bar. I think he was really aiming for the cross rather than that, it just about destroyed our camera lens. There was danger once more because Jones got it through for Morgan and he just couldn't control it. Might have been danger if he had. Good long clearance from Sherwood inside the last couple of minutes of the half. Dermot forward. Woods is in the clear on the right hand side. Reese is in the middle. Watson's joining him as well. It needs a good ball in here from Neil Woods. He's laid it back for Cunnington instead. Cunnington slips his man neatly. Now asks Woods to do it all again. Mesmerising stuff. Oh, it's a good ball back for Watson! Off the top of the bar, and it could have been the perfect ending to the half. But Miller must have got a touch because it's a corner. Tommy Watson, so close to his 10th of the season. Excellent play from Woods. A really inviting ball back for Watson. It took a deflection off the defender, actually, before Miller got there. Here's the corner kick. Cockrell coming for it, can't get there, neither can Reese. Desperate defending from Exeter. As Grimsby look for a second before the break. Good ball in for Reese. Tees him up again. Here it comes. It must be! Cockrell! He's got a second! Just rewards for Grimsby Town. Their persistence pays off. And surely now Division 2 is beckoning for the Mariners. Excellent play. Reese held it up. Turned back here. And John Cockrell strikes for the second time in the match. And it really deserved it after the build-up from Grimsby. And it's John Cockrell's day all right. Two for Grimsby, two for Cockrell. And a perfect ending to the half for Grimsby Town. Calm it down, he says. Just relax. And we're almost there. And indeed, the referee blows the whistle to signal the end of an excellent half for uh, Grimsby Town. The two goals from John Cockrell, the second one coming at the perfect psychological moment just before the break. You can't really see Exeter coming back from this. And if they don't, Grimsby will be on their way to Division 2. Well, two of the Grimsby Town heroes of recent years are here on this great day, Joe Waters and Nigel Batch. Joe, are you impressed by what you've seen so far? Yeah, uh, they were very, you know, shaky to start off with, which is understandable. It's a big game, your whole season rests on it. But now they've settled down, they're playing some lovely football, and all that was really needed was there to put the finishing touch to it, and they've just done that with that uh, goal just before half-time. Yeah. Nigel, has it brought back a few memories for you here today? Well, I feel that. It's nice to see Joe back and all that, and... Uh, Things that all atmosphere back that John himself has had in the past. Are they going to do it, do you think? Is it back to Division 2 for the club? Well, hopefully. Touch wood, we think it could be. Great. Nice to see you both again. Thanks, Nigel. Thank you very much, Joe. So 2-0, Grimsby Town lead at half-time. We'll have the second half for you after this break.
Welcome back to Blundell Park. A perfect first half for Grimsby Town. They lead by two John Cockerill goals against Exeter City here. Let's hear the reaction of Grimsby's Paul Agnew with Nick. Paul, oh, what will the boss have been saying at half time? Um, just a matter now, just keeping them going. Um, the goal before half time was just the tonic we needed. And as um, long as you do nothing silly, we'll um, be there uh, there are ways. What you don't want is an early old Brexit. I think that's right. Um, they'll be a little down hearted after that um, last goal. So, um, but we're looking good. Thanks very much indeed, John. So our Grimsby 45 minutes away from becoming a second division club again. We shall soon find out. They lost their second division place in 1987 and then of course went straight down to the fourth division the following year. So they've come back up quickly. Let's hope the ascendancy continues in this second half. Here now with the ball is Watson. Losing out to Brown though. Already to Grimsby. Marshall intervening on Exeter's behalf and then playing it upfield for Jones. Side uh, made any changes during the half time break. And Exeter sticking to their original formation, have a free kick. And Cooper to take. He's only a young lad, is Mark Cooper, but uh, he takes the responsibility of a lot of the free kicks. Alongside another youngster here in Jonathan Brown. Looks as though Cooper's lining himself up for the shot. He's complaining about McDermott on the end of the line. And McDermott breaking it. And the booking is going to be for Cooper. Because Cooper was trying to do the referee's job. Oh, and in fact, it's Brown and not Cooper who's getting booked. Well, I thought that the referee was running over to Mark Cooper. And in fact, Jonathan Brown gets the yellow card. <laughs> Sensibly, he's getting a long way away from the free kick now. So Cooper has to do something a bit different. He plays it in and it's beyond foot yet. It's going to come down here for Bally. A first for handball. The referee just kept his hands behind his back. Scott Hiley tricks Cunnington. Lays it forward. The ball out from Jones. It's to Bally. Hiley down the right. Here it comes in and Morgan was again beaten to it by Futcher and Grimsby come forward with their captain Cunnington. Three blue shirts around him though. But he's playing in a good ball. Watson, Reese is on his outside. And he gives him the pass now. Now then Tony Reese squares it and Hobson able to get in the way. But Grimsby still able to come again with Watson and with Reese. And it's a good ball for Watson and the chip over the top just going the wrong side of the uprights. Really cultured football though between Reese and Watson. Tony Rice Reese began his footballing life as an Aston Villa junior. Really made an impact at Birmingham and then up here with Barnsley before coming to Grimsby. again by Butcher he's not given anything away today oh. Jones good turn as well excellent play from Jones and now Morgan lays it back for Cooper's shot oh it's a cracking goal as well super goal Beautifully struck by Mark Cooper and Exeter reduced the deficit. So just as everything seemed to be going right for Grimsby, the manager's son strikes on behalf of Exeter City. And this is a splendid strike. It was too good for Sherwood. And Grimsby reminded that there's a match on here. Morgan laid it back and Mark Cooper 
belted in his 11th of the season tremendously well well his dad will be rather pleased with him 55 minutes gone it's Grimsby 2 Exeter 1 to looking to increase the tension but Gilbert comes away and stayed with him Reese holding it up sensibly again refinding Gilbert Watson on the right hand side they want a third to Grimsby they want a two goal margin again Gilbert tries to get it on the left foot Reese couldn't do it Cunnington they've still got a lot of men up in this attack and one of them is Woods here edge of the Exeter area the back pass Watson lays it in, Reese. it's all about death flicks and Cunnington's shot kept out, Taylor it was. Pinto will stop there in the Exeter penalty area but now they break and uh, Grimsby have three men back, Exeter three men up. Oh this is good running from Jones, he's looking dangerous, is Jones here? And Sherwood has to stretch to make the save, down to his left, Harry Jones polishing that for Exeter and again we come down the right with Grimsby. The tempo certainly been lifted in the last few minutes as Reese is onside. One defender behind him. He opens it up for Neil Woods. This could finish it. Excellent tackle by Sean Taylor on Neil Woods. And yet again, it was the back heel of Reese which split Exeter asunder. Neil Woods just can't get among the goals. He's gone ten without a goal, having got four in three. An important day and one of Grimsby's biggest crowds for years, as you would have expected. 14,225. Cunnington gets there. Here is Woods. Still Woods. Reese inside him. Tony Reese now and loops the shot in and over and wide. Good interplay again between Woods and Reese. They are a formidable pairing. Caught Exeter just a little bit unawares with this move. Woods to Reese. He elected for the shot and just didn't aim it correctly. Watson losing out. No foul. Marshall's got the chance to play it in for Exeter. And, uh, another dodgy moment. Sherwood was unable to come from his line, but they got it clear and now. Reese just beaten again by Dryden. There's a good ball. This must be a chance for Grimsby if they can keep on side. Watson for Reese. One against one. Tony Reese on the left foot. Oh, and again, he just couldn't get it right. And Exeter got enough back to deny him. Well, it's a hard game, this football, isn't it? When it's just not running your way. Out from Fletcher. Dermott does well, Watson allowing it to run, Woods sprinting away up the left hand side, but this for the moment he's got to stay on side, Neil Woods the chance to wrap it up, oh dear, he couldn't do that, his first touch then really let him down, well that's the sign of a striker lacking in confidence, but Cunnington has done the job, he's won it and he goes on, nicks it back, the referee played the advantage rule well. Here is Gilbert, there's a man at his back, he hasn't seen him. Gilbert goes on, tucks it on, Dave Gilbert! Chips the keeper, but it's into the crowd. And still they can't relieve the tension. And that got Alan Buckley off his feet. On his feet, we should say. <laughs> Gary Birtle sits on the extreme left of the picture there, with his head in his hands too. Promotion means so much to this club. Grimsby do not need Exeter to score against them now. That would be the worst possible thing that could happen in this match. Reese is there. He just uh, was unable to get the ball through. Cunnington does. For Woods. The header on is to Watson. Woods goes through the middle himself. McDermott has supported the raid. Holds off Brown. Reese calling for it, edge of the area. Here is Reese, so he got it over it. He knew Cockrell was coming in behind him. But highly spotted it and cleared. And there is still a match here. Robotham gets his first touch of the ball. Plays it wide for Bowie. Exeter coming and looking for an equaliser here. And Marshall coming in behind McDermott, who just did enough. 
more nervy moments to survive for Grimsby Town. From the corner then for Exeter City. Marshall with it. Away by Cunnington. He's never stopped running. Marshall puts another one in. There's the flick on! Oh, so close! And now blasted over the top. Goodness me, it was Taylor's header which struck the upright. Was it Neville? Yes, it was Taylor. It was Taylor's header which struck the upright and then Jones put it behind with the aid of a deflection. Sean Taylor does cause problems in there with his height. And that's how close Grimsby have come to being hauled back at 2-2 and who knows, that might be a lucky omen for them. Maybe this is their lucky day. Because if this had gone in, they'd then have been sweating on the result from Bolton Wanderers. Well, he can count himself very unlucky. Good defending tackle by McDermott, though. Marshall with the latest corner. Again, Sherwood can't come from the line. It's in there dangerously. They appeal for a handball, not given. Butcher has the chance to play it upfield. He loses it. Grimsby still get it up as far as Reese. He calls for the return pass from Gilbert and goes on to it. Two defenders are with Tony Reese. He's worked manfully today and Reese trying to get the better of the defender Dryden. Still he's here and he's done an excellent job in holding it up. Now Gilbert, it comes across the area. Taylor belts it away. Butcher's header again. Still it's not all over. It's Grimsby 2, Exeter City 1 and Grimsby are a couple of minutes away from Division 2. The crowd really sing now. They want to hear that final whistle but I think they've a couple of minutes to go yet. Tortuous minutes as well so long as there's only one goal in it. Lever, the header. Hobson couldn't get in there. The fullback highly comes for the shot and Sherwood takes it aside. And all the pressure is on Grimsby. They were 2 0 up at half time, but Exeter have come back and highly shot there. Flicked on by Hobson. Well saved, Sherwood. Well, if you're a Grimsby Town fan, then these are pulsating moments. They just want to hear that final whistle. Another Marshall corner. It's the third in as many minutes. It comes to the back post to Robotham and the shot whistles over the Grimsby crossbar. And Darren Robotham, who can strike a ball sweetly, was within six inches, I think, there, of rattling that crossbar for the second time. And Tony Reese is going off. What a great game he's played today. He's replaced by Mark Smith for the closing moments. And Reese gets a terrific ovation. He's done his club proud today. It was a struggle to get him out there at all, bearing in mind the injury he's been suffering from. But he really has led the attack superbly well. Marshall's header. Butcher's header. McDermott has the chance once more to play Grimsby forward he does it Smith and he was fouling the defender Dryden and it's a free kick for Exeter all eyes are on the referee Mr Morton Grimsby fans are singing let's hope they're not silenced by Exeter goal now up it goes again edge of the Grimsby area knocked away, put back inside for Butcher to clear it tortuous moments for Grimsby Lees it's going to fall now for Robotham and Grimsby just cannot get that ball away, they've got to do Jobling nods it out of play for a throw in Alan Buckley screaming because the second division is so close for Grimsby Town 
another ball to come in and it's gone beyond Sherwood but fortunately it didn't fall to an Exeter man it does now to Brown his cross in Sherwood comes to gather it and that's relieved a little of the tension the referee again looks at the watch it's still not time I saw him shake his head to Cunnington who was asking him Cunnington wins it though importantly Miller went straight to Gilbert he could try and chip the keeper almost from there Smith lays it back for Cockrell remember he got both goals that seems an eternity ago now Gilbert took his eye off the ball and lost it he wins it back again the crowd shouting for goodness sake blow for full time here is Neville for Exeter is there drama left in this one even yet remember it's the last minute of the season not just of the game Brown to play the ball in Sherwood will collect it Remember Grimsby went all the way down from Division 2 where they were relegated in 1987 they went down to Division 4 can they come all the way back up again? And they'll create history if they do because Cambridge and Southend who came up with them last season and with Exeter that remember Cambridge and Southend are up and Grimsby are looking to go up with them any second now Smith he's offside it's not the final whistle I don't think Tony Reese can bear to watch he's turned away and there will be a pitch invasion here but the match is not over yet Exeter's free kick the ball cleared here is Brown for Exeter who continue to play and come towards the Grimsby goal with Marshall they have to dispossess him and it's out of play it's a goal kick more relief for Grimsby well those spectators are going to encroach if we're not careful Mr Morton must be seconds away from blowing that final whistle now play on he says play on and Grimsby must do that and that's it Grimsby Town are promoted for the second successive season you've got a glimpse of half the man there but Alan Buckley is submerged so the jubilant Grimsby Town fans celebrate for the second successive year and those two first half goals from John Cockrell have done the trick for them despite one by Mark Cooper for Exeter early in the second half and a lot of Exeter pressure it's Grimsby's day of joy they're back in Division 2 Grimsby 2, Exeter City 1 and we'll be back with more comments after the break they've secured promotion back to Division 2 John, I think they like you. Yeah, well, they're bound to after today, aren't they? But, you know, it's a great day for the club. Everyone, all the players, supporters, you couldn't have asked for better. Uh, and it seems you dream of being local left. It's extra special for me. I was going to say you must lie in bed and dream of scoring the two goals to take the team up. Sure enough, I've just been on the radio and I was dreaming about that last night. I thought I'd get one as it turned out, I got two. You know, I'm obviously delighted. Um, it's great for my dad as well. He used to play here. And he was a bit down when they went down to the fourth division. And as it's turned out, we've got back up to the second, so I'm pleased for him. And you've had a long time in non-league football and suddenly Division 2 beckons. That's right, yeah. I've had ten years in non-league and now three years in the professional game. Uh, first one, I first signed, I wondered if I'd done the right thing, giving a good job up, and then I played for Stafford, it was a good club. But it's moments like this, first year we got to the last 16 in the FA Cup, 
next, next year we win promotion and then we've just won promotion again. What more can I ask for? What was it like in the last five minutes? What were your nerves like? Uh, well, about the last 45 minutes, never mind the last five minutes. Uh, it was a bit tense, we all knew we'd done well at half time, we'd come in. But we've made a bit, probably hard work of it in the second half. But at the end of the day it's 2-1 and we're in the second division. Steve, Trevor Francis has got promotion, you've got promotion, it's a good week for the old, isn't it? Yeah. Well, well, yeah, I suppose you could say that. Yeah. I think Trevor's probably a few months older than me, so, um, yeah, I suppose you could say it's a good week for the old. He's with uh, Fitch as well, he's about 42, so he's done well as well. I think it's his first promotion, 42 years of age, that's true. What was it like in those last few minutes? Oh, of course, it was, you know, so, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a relief for us, because them coming back from 2-0 to a 2-1, two -one, and 2-1's a funny score, and anything can happen, so at the end of the day, it's a relief for us, yeah. Oh, well, it was a dream come true, isn't it, for the yeah. Baxter here to Division 2? Yeah, delighted, absolutely. Made it. Tremendous. What was it like in those closing minutes? Hectic, but at the end of the day, we deserved it. And uh, as you know, everybody's excited. <laughs> Tremendous. Made up. And the legs will keep going into the second division, will Oh, no doubt, yeah. Especially with these young lads here. Is it yeah. true this is your first promotion? Yes, 78 years as a professional, and it's the first time ever. Uh, can't believe it. Well done. Thanks very much. Thank you. Don't ask me about next season. Uh, I mean, the way I feel at the meeting, I'm obviously on a high, but I've given all I've got to give in two and a half years now. I'm about ready for holiday with my wife and children, and I'll start thinking about next season as and when I think it's necessary. Particularly nice for some of the, the older fellas, dare yeah, I say, that people like Paul Fletcher, that you've brought in, you probably thought their careers were over, and you, you've given them some success, and they've given you success. Well, I think, you know, if you're going to use Paul as an example and, and GB, um, the ability is without question. It's a matter of keeping them right through the week so they can perform for you on Saturdays. And in Paul's case, particularly this year, and Gary Burton's case last year, I mean, that's what we do. And great for the fans, 14,000 things played here for years and years and years. Tremendous game. Um, I'm pleased for everybody. I know it would have been different if we didn't do it, but we did it. And there's the final Division 3 table. Cambridge overtaking South End by winning today to take the title, and Grimsby claim third place on goal difference from Bolton. Into the playoffs with Bolton go Tranmere, Brentford and Bury. Bradford just missed out. There's more football on YTV in just over 12 hours. Goals on Sunday at 12.25 for all the regional highlights from the season's final day. A day they'll never forget in Grimsby. Good night. Grimsby Town against Tranmere Rovers, John Hell. Well, the main factor to Grimsby will obviously be John Aldridge. Eight goals already making the leading scorer in the Football League. But he's without his regular striking partner, Jim Steele, who has a knee injury. The home side's attack is led by Mary Jones. And the last time he started a league game here, it was for Exeter City on the day Grimsby clinched promotion to Division 2. Turn header from Aldridge on to Morrissey. Beaten away by Jobling, but it's gone to Thomas. And up in the middle is Malkin, and a clear header for Chris Malkin as well. That should serve as a warning to Grimsby's defence. Malkin in a good position, but he lofted the header. Here now McDermott, a goal scorer last week. This time it's a passy place for Jones is in behind the defender. Well, Garnett allowed that to run through, and Eric Nixon is safe from here there. Otherwise, Mary Jones could have been off the mark with his first league goal for the club. He gets in behind Sean Garnett and gets the shot in, and I think it was the right leg of Nixon which diverted it. Picked it by Thomas, double here, and here's Aldridge, and John Aldridge scores! the Tranmere Rovers the 
first slip of a chance he's had and Aldridge maintains his record of scoring in every match so far this season and indeed for Tranmere Rovers Tony Thomas, Aldridge controlled it in one and blasted it home in two so a quarter of an hour gone and John Aldridge continues his remarkable start to his Tranmere career calling for it and going on here John Cockrell two challenges beating away the second one by Hughes the first one by Thomas what Grimsby need is an equaliser though Gilbert and Jobling over the ball and it is from Jobling and back post here is Lever oh the header was clear Mark Lever was no more than a foot away from his first goal since last January then. Nicely played in by Kevin Jobling. And Lever's created space at the back post as you'll see. There's his header and Nixon saw it leap over the top. And spare here who it needed to be threaded through left by Jones. Cockley was behind him in space. Instead it's McDermott again. McDermott trying his luck straight against Higgins. The rebound will fall. Stones, Woods, they're all here. They're queuing up. Now it's Cockrell. Great effort from John Cockrell. The best effort of the half by a Grimsby man. And John Cockrell, who scored last week at Oxford, is a couple of feet away from another one here. There were almost too many Grimsby men there. And in the end it was Cockrell who took the ball from Dobbin and stabbed the shot wide of Nixon's right upright. Martindale having to check. Dobbin working it nicely. Good play, Jim Dobbin. He's got Woods on his left. He's got Jones on his right. Here's Neil Woods for Grimsby. Can he equalise? It's cut across the face of goal and off the line by Hughes. And still Neil Woods can't get the ball into the opposition net. Well, Neil Woods hasn't found the net since last March against Chester. But here he's played in by Dobbin and just touches it maybe a little too wide there. The angle was difficult. Nixon only got a palm of a glove to it. And Hughes off the line. Good ball, played by Morrissey, here's a chance now for Malkin, who scored it. That was a good chance, and with Aldridge on the goal line virtually, looking for the cross, he did neither one thing nor the other. Lovely pass from Morrissey, it really cut Grimsby in two. Malkin taking it on, I think he's trying to beat Sherwood on his near post. Eventually it broke for Woods, now for Gilbert, jobbling up the left, here he is, Kevin jobbling, still in possession. Through as far as Woods inside the area, tries to turn inside Higgins, leaves it for Gilbert, excellent play from Grimsby, cut back as far as Watson. And well he might kick the turf. That's really disappointing from Tommy Watson. He all the time in the world under the ball. Knows he should have at least hit the target. Delicate build-up. Delightfully done. Gilbert's cross perfect. Watson back post. And if he wasn't going to score, at least he should have hit the target. It really is unbelievable that Grimsby haven't found a way into Tramier's net. With all the pressure they had. And that was nearly blocked. And now Fletcher has lost it to Martin, they leads the break and the chance now, Aldridge has Morrissey wide right. Aldridge waiting, now Morrissey can finish it off, he should have done too. What more do I have to do, he says, he's not got a goal so far this season and really there, John Morrissey should have got the second. Perfect pass from Aldridge, 
Sherwood made the angle, did he, but he still should have scored. That was well won by McDermott. Now Cockrell for Woods. For Smith. He's a gifted player. Through the middle it goes. Bertles knocking it back. Jobling will have a go. And it's a good effort from Kevin Jobling as well. He's not got a goal since October 89, almost two years since he found Gillingham's net. But he struck this one nicely, and Eric Nixon down, groping a little, made the save. Eldridge will get the free kick off Lever. That's what he was looking for, and that's exactly what he got. Bringing all his experience to bear there, John Eldridge. Scored over 200 goals in his career. Just under 200 of them in the league. Free kick from Hughes and Thomas is in there and this might be two. It is. And you can see it coming. Tony Thomas stole into some space in the Grimsby penalty area and with Sherwood rushing from his goal, a flick of the head was enough. For Thomas to make it, Grimsby nil, Tranmere two, and Tony Thomas, a backheader, Butcher couldn't keep it out, and that might have sealed the points for Tranmere. Thomas's first goal since March, when he netted one against Shrewsbury. And now Grimsby do have problems. This is a test of their resilience. The corner this time though. Emergency required from Grimsby. They've got the corner. Levers in for it. It's there. It's a goal. And back from Grimsby with Neil Woods this strike. At a perfect moment. They really needed that. And Neil Woods, who's been so barren in terms of goals. It's his first in 15 matches, and what a great time to get it. Lever hustling for it there, it spins away, and Woods needs no further invitation. And it's now 2-1 to Tranmere. Tranmere intent on retaining possession at the moment, but it was almost given away then. Martin and Aldridge just couldn't contrive an opening. That's a good header from Bertels. Woods won't get it through. He might pick it up for Woods. And here's Neil Woods. He can make it 2 2. And Woods has made it 2 2. A bad blunder in defence. And this extraordinary goal scoring sequence of Neil Woods He seems to get all his goals in clusters. And he's got two in the space of a few minutes here. Gary Bertels, the substitute slipped it clear to him and Woods on the right foot beat Nixon inside his near upright 2-2 two, two it is and it's all down to this man Neil Woods who hadn't scored in 14 games and he's now got two in the space of 10 minutes well a very good match indeed at Grundle Park ends all square Grimsby 2, Tranmere 2 and the two sides who came up together from Division 3 at the end of last season have given us royal entertainment. Neil Woods' two goals in the space of ten minutes rescued a point for Grimsby after Aldridge and Thomas had taken Tranmere to in front. These two sides will do well in Division 2. Grimsby Town 2, Tranmere Rovers 2. It's a good side we've got here now, isn't it? I think uh, anybody who comes down here regularly will tell you that we play some very good football. And I think we did today possibly from box to box without really causing the keeper too many problems but we get it in and we, we pass it we don't do this long ball stuff and I think we're very The Big Man is back five months after the Rumbelows raptures with Wednesday at Wembley can Ron Atkinson keep his hands on the cup this time with Aston Villa well they hope not Crowds who waved Grimsby back into the big time with promotion last season have had more good things to watch in Division 2. 
leaders in points. It's there! It's a goal! And four days ago, they warmed up for tonight's big cup occasion by silencing the vocal roar. Sunderland 1, Grimsby 2, the Mariners up to 8. As for Dick Ron, his first return to this region went very nicely. Thank you. Hillsborough, August the 18th. It's Willis' turn to come on the charge. And Atkinson, it's going to be one against one here. Chris Woods waits and it's squared, squared for Staunton. And Steve Staunton strikes the might well through to be a winner for Villa. Since then, it's been a bit up and down, depending what day it is. White York's stunning goal to complete a successful comeback against Forest last time out, but Villa unbeaten on Saturdays. But in midweek, they haven't won a thing. The game's under floodlights, a strange fact. I don't think you've won under lights yet this season. Why do you have to remind us of those things? You're right, we've never won a game on a Wednesday night so far. But you've got to start sometime, Jordan. What better place to start than, than Grimsby? Pitch is looking wonderful. It's in great nick, and uh, we've got to start winning midweek sometime, haven't we? I'm trying to pretend to our players it's a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so we begin a night packed with action with the game of the night, resurgent Grimsby against Villa, three times winners of the competition. Let's have the team news now from John Helm. Well, Nick, there is a surprise in Alan Buckley's squad. Tony Reese sidelined with knee ligament trouble since the second match of the season is back on substitute duty. And with Neil Woods restored after a throat infection, Goofy should have a greater cutting edge. Villa make a couple of changes too. Despite beating Nottingham Forest in their last match, Gordon Cowens regains his place from Kent Nielsen and Paul Mortimer returns with Ian Olney dropping to substitute. Tonight's match official is from Barnsley and he is David Phillips. An excellent atmosphere at Bundle Park. A slight delay in the kickoff time to get everybody into the ground. And then we have a false start. Don't think referee had Phillips had blown the official whistle. And away we go then. Villa playing in their familiar blue and claret. And Grimsby in black and white stripes. Nigel Spink is always in the Villa goal. It's going to be a very interesting contrast. Both sides play really good football. Ron Atkinson and Alan Buckley, both disciples of the great game, being played in the proper manner. And a long punt up field for a start from Sherwood. And Grimsby first on the edge of the Villa penalty area. Staunton sweeping up and then taking the ball back. There is McDermott for Grimsby. Finding Gary Childs. There's always good movement around Grimsby. And Mary Jones makes a good burst down the right. Puts the cross in. And it's turned behind for the first corner of the night. Good covering work by Darius Kovici. The Polish defender keeping Neil Woods at bay. start from the Mariners it's only a couple of years ago since Coventry City came here and were beaten in the old Littlewoods Cup and now it's changed its name to the Rumbelows and Villa know they've got a job on their hands here and that's going to be turned behind by uh, Spink with Jones coming in on it but it's going to be a goal kick the ball had gone out before Spink got up this time York trying to get the better of Futcher. Holds him off for the moment and then puts a cross in which uh, Sherwood at six feet four handles very capably. That's no trouble to a man of his size. A disappointment once more for Grimsby with Neil Woods this time the offender in going offside. No doubt delighted to be playing alongside such a cultured performer as McGrath. They can start again from the back. Measured passes from Villa. 
Regis is there and it's spun away and here is York inside the area trying to get Regis through and it's John McDermott who gets back just to nudge the ball safely back to Sherwood and in the midst of all that there's an injury as you can see well he went straight down did Paul Agnew and stayed down so Regis was trying to get in on it and this looks quite serious didn't at first Agnew coming in there was the challenge and he just got an elbow on the side of the head from Silla Regis I don't think there's any suggestion that it was intentional but immediately the medical people have come darting out and quite rightly so too Regis will be as concerned as anybody Arthur Mann is there Peter Jellick the Grimsby physiotherapist too It's good to see Paul Agnew is sitting up. Well, from Grimsby's point of view, it's uh, important for Agnew to stay on, really. They've got two strikers on the bench in Tony Rees and Mark Smith. Mark Smith, uh, a wide midfield player, perhaps you describe me as well, rather than a striker, though he can play up front. Yeah, Paul Agnew is all right again. Good to see. McGrath. Grimsby finding life hard in trying to contain the first division side. Here is Regis this time in the area. Asking Mortimer to put a crossover. Oh, Futcher's missed it. Chance here for York. And it was the brave Agnew again who got in. So he's using his body to good effect now. And he's picked up a knock on his leg, would you believe? Staunton. That will be a free kick against Woods. But Paul Agnew is down again. Out of your picture. The Irish fullback, well, really is in the wars. He's just been totally knocked out. In the day's condition, he continued, but then when he stretched in keeping Aston Villa's attack at bay inside the penalty area, he's done damage to himself, and I think that's going to be the end of Paul Agnew's match. But Agnew's going to have to go off, and that's a real blow for Grimsby Town's ch chances in this match. He'll be replaced by Mark Smith, who's a left-sided player. So I imagine he'll drop into left-back position, unless he switches with Dave Gilbert. Some agony there for Paul Agnew. He was so disappointed. And players resumed already, and here is Staunton for Villa, as Gimsby reorganise. seeing a lot of the ball at the moment not able to do much with it that time really the chances have been almost nil in the game well, York would have had one but for Agnew's intervention it's Mortimer now for Villa good ball as well up for Steve Staunton and this is the first goal no ruled out ruled out by the linesman's flag on the far side of the ground and that's relief for Grimsby because Steve Staunton who struck a goal on his debut for Villa at Hillsborough on the opening day of the season put that ball past Sherwood into Grimsby's net and the linesman said he was just offside let's have a look here and there he is just offside so unlucky Steve Staunton Switches straight away to the other end. Jones in the chase with McGrath. He's got support up here as well. And Jones still taking on the Irish international. Lays it on now for Gilbert. Here's Gilbert's cross. Coming up on the back post. It's Childs. Drives it in and it strikes the legs of the defender. And goes behind. It was Richardson who got a body in the way. The best we've seen from Grimsby. Gary Childs looking for his first goal of the season. 
and Grimsby corner kick. Only their second of the night, and Dave Gilbert has come over to take it. Speak, speak couldn't get there, bobbled away from a couple of heads. But the chance hasn't gone away yet, because here is the substitute Smith. Grimsby's throwing. Villa's turn to find difficulty in getting the ball out of their half. Grimsby really need a good spell. And that's a useful ball which Teal puts behind. Another Grimsby corner. The second in a minute. They've got to try and catch Villa out from one of these set pieces, which is what they've been working on in training. Up goes Lever. He'll try and put pressure on Spink on the Aston Villa line, it's a poor corner, although Blake says, have another go. And Gilbert will do exactly that. And now they'll get another corner. The need is to get bodies into that Villa penalty area. There are five up there for it, it's coming right across and a firm header out by McGrath. Superb defending. Childs plays it in, a bit too long maybe, and whoa, no problem for Mortimer. Kibichi. The news about Paul Agnew down there on the bench is that it is the right hamstring that he's pulled. So that really is another casualty to add to the long list already here at Blundell Park. Woods. Gilbert just gets away from Blake's challenge. He's got a man wide left, he uses him now, this is Cunnington, the Grimsby captain. Villa shielding things very well at the moment. Eventually the ball might come in, it does, but it's away by Richardson. And the shot from Gilbert, it's without flattening one of the Villa defenders who's gone down in there. It might have been Steele. Richardson in fact and the chance came uh, for him here he rather snatched at it the ball was headed away first of all and that's where he copped it it wasn't from the shot at all it was a collision with Teal so Aston Villa's captain the latest to be in the wars he's ok I think Villa have Derek Mountfield and Ian Olney on their bench tonight. Dave Gilbert enjoying a bit of a lark with somebody. He'll take the corner now. And away we go again. It's long. And a great header from Lever which just clipped the outside of the upright I fancy. It's the second time on the night that Mark Lever's got it well in the Villa penalty area. Now let's see, I think this one just catches the upright and the crossbar. There's Lever's header and it just flicks wide. No, it's gone wide. Smith. Oh, brilliantly done by York. How he turned Butcher there, that was superb. And he goes on and on. And then tries to play the cross in and it came back. Childs had gone all the way with it. Here is Gary Charles starting from a very unfamiliar position. Sent it back. Might just go for a corner unless Spink is very quick. I think that's a corner. And with only seconds of the half left, Grimsby have what could well prove their last chance of the half. 
to disturb Nigel Spink here. He's kept only one blank sheet so far this season. Grimsby want to ensure that uh, that particular record keeps on going. Gilbert's corner for Grimsby. Long and Lever again will come to meet it. Couldn't get a clean head on it though, so this is Childs. Oh, he's done well. And he's played a good cross into, but the angle on the header was too difficult for Neil Woods. Puts his teeth and says, I'll come again and have another go. Childs did so well there. Good ball in, but the angle far too awkward. It's been a very easy game for Mr Phillips to control in terms of the behaviour of the two sides. He's hardly been a tackle in anger, but it's half-time here at Blundell Park. Much for Alan Buckley and Ron Atkinson to impart to their teams during the break. But it's nil-nil after the first 45 minutes, and we shall have the second half for you after our break. Welcome back to Blundell Park for the first ever cup meeting between Grimsby Town and Aston Villa. Grimsby then now attacking the goal to our left. In fact, it's such a long time since these sides met at all. 1947 was the last occasion Aston Villa came to Grimsby for a league match. Grimsby won that day 3-0 with names like Tweedy and Blenkinsop in the side then. And straight away, Villa's York is kept out by Lever. Taken on the chest. Nicely, nicely done by Woods that. Here is Mark Smith, the stand-in left back, and he's playing that one forward for Jones to give chase to Paul McGrath. Having to eventually put the ball out of play. And the Republic of Ireland International has been an absolute stalwart for Villa since signing for Manchester United. McGrath did too. Big boot up the middle from Sherwood. Not it on by Jones, but past Woods. That's a nice header from Regis and York, picking it up and eluding the challenge of Smith. Needs to lay a good ball in for Villa. He does just that, oh, and it was flicked off the top of Mortimer's head beyond the incoming Richardson behind him. Paul Futcher with a bit to say about that. But really York showing his skills here. First of all eluding Smith, then playing the ball in, and it just flicked off the top of Mortimer's head. It's rather slow and deliberate build-up. Eventually it comes to Jones inside Villa's area, however. And the turn from him produces a Grimsby corner. Barry Jones playing in his very first league cup tie. Here's this corner kick. They still need this breakthrough. Maybe Smith can get it. Oh, the crossbar. So unlucky. It took a deflection. And Mark Smith can't believe his poor luck. Neither can Jones there. Driven in by Smith, the deflection from Jones, and it rebounds from Villa's crossbar with Spink hopelessly beaten. Down the line goes Gilbert, chased by Kubici. Tries to get it past the pole, and a free kick results. And maybe this will be Grimsby's chance, the crowd roar behind the Villa net. goes Lever but noticeably Grimsby uh, leaving three men back so they're fully outnumbered inside the Villa penalty area all the three men are lurking on the edge of it they wait for Dobbins free kick and it's pinged in and Jones is coming in it's driven back up there and it's flicked off the top of the <laughs> Villa head I think it was Staunton McGrath was there too. Come on, says Paul McGrath, showing typical grit. He 
summons up more energy from his co-defenders. But Grimsby have a corner, which Gilbert drives in. And he's going to get another chance. And he's got another corner. You really do feel that this is Grimsby's chance. They must get at least one goal tonight to take with them to Villa Park. Here's the next corner. And it's beyond everybody, but picking it up far side of the area, Gary Childs overruns it. And it was made easy for Staunton in the end. It's a good spell for Grimsby. But at the end of the night, if they don't score, then it wouldn't have been seen to have been. Well, they really need something quickly. They're still in possession. Inside the area, Jones. Good ball from him to Gilbert. Great chance here, but Gilbert smacks the cross straight into the legs of Richardson, who's worked hard and isn't worried about conceding another corner. Gilbert will take the corner kick. Spink defends his goal and can't come for it. It's knocked out. Smith has already rattled in one shot and there's the little flick. Oh, a side foot which carries it wide from Cunnington. And try as they might, Grimsby are just unable to find the villain next. Gilbert's corner kick there. Spink set up and then couldn't get there. It flicked off McGrath's head. Smith sized up his options, hit it in. And it was Sean Cunnington, the captain, whose back heel flicked it wide. A really good effort though from Grimsby. They've got bodies up there for once and Smith has twice troubled them with these drives in from corners and that's a deliberate move. Oh, and he's neatly held by Ron Atkinson. He urges his team on. They'll be quite content at 0-0. He'll be even happier if they get a goal, of course. Staunton, the ball in towards Regis, who nods it down. A great chance for Cowens. And in the end, he can only toe poke it into the hands of Steve Sherwood. It looked so dangerous when Cowens got onto the end of Regis' header when Kutcher missed it. And now at the other end, Grimsby have a chance of their own. Regis leads the line beautifully. Brings in Staunton. Now it's Villa asking a few questions all of a sudden. Mortimer. Staunton once more. This time it's York. Staunton again. Poor ball in. Butcher's met those all his career. And here's more danger for Grimsby. Villa, plenty of men around the penalty area. And that took a nasty deflection as well. As a result, it's a corner. Mortimer who struck it. And here is the goal that Grimsby are defending. A Kevin Richardson corner for them. Important for Grimsby not to concede it. A goal on their own ground in this tie. That's what Villa are seeking now as Richardson plays another one in and it's a dangerous cross as well. Put it over the top and it was a clear header for Regis. Ron Atkinson has a new balmy army down in the Midlands and they've never stopped chanting in the second half. And Childs has the ball. Oh, down the line and a very good run made here by Neil Woods. The cross coming over and it's that man again, McGrath, who's missed absolutely nothing on the night. Great turn by Regis to try and get Villa ticking again. Charles with the back pass, but it's still 0-0. Nil -nil. They'll try the longer route this time. Phillips has a glance at the to watch as it's come through here it would be cruel on Grimsby if they were to lose a goal now 
Blake is in possession for Villa trying to tee up Regis and Siddle Regis hits one with the right foot and it flies high and wide and really there's been a nil-nil feel about the match from very early on and it's still nil-nil because Siddle Regis here having worked an opening for himself couldn't finish it off This free kick is against Woods and for Villa. Cowens. He knows that Villa are happy to slow things down. And there's the shot which Sirwood saves, but there's still a chance here. Well, Mortimer can't finish it off. Regis' second shot in a couple of minutes. This time Sherwood got down to palm the ball away and the angle was too acute for Mortimer. Cowan's ball up then, put to Grimsby in bother. Cyril Regis immediately hitting the shot in. But Mortimer, as he followed up, just couldn't round it off. And that's why the players are now leaving the field after a goalless draw here. Grimsby tried, it might remain, but couldn't find a way through a resolute Villa defence. And they have a tough task on their hands now when they go back to Villa Park in a fortnight's time. The result, about right really, on the balance of play. It ended Grimsby Town nil, Aston Villa nil. Mark, it was a game of very few chances. I mean, were you happy at the end of the night? Well, it's very quiet in our dressing room. The gaffer says well played and everything, but you've got to be disappointed not to take a lead to Villa Park. I mean, it was a very close game, very tight, few chances. But I thought it was a quite an entertaining game to say there was no chances. It's not all over, though, because your away form is excellent at the moment. That's right. I mean, last year our home form was a lot better than our away form, but this year we've got three wins out of four away from home. So, obviously, I think we'll take a lot of fans down there, have a good atmosphere, and it's not dead and buried. Did it lift you playing against someone of the quality of Cyril Regis? Well, obviously it does a little bit. I mean, you, week in, week out, you try and... That's where your bread and butter is, but obviously it's nice to pick you. It's against uh, internationals and stars, as they are, they've got a few of. So it was just, just nice to play against Big Cyril, yeah. And the message is the time's not all over yet, then? Oh, not all over, I told you. City slickers roll into Cleethorpes. It's another big Rumbelows Cup night at Blundell Park. The famous names of Tottenham are here to take on Grimsby for a place in the last 60. And they're famous because of moments like this against FC Porto six days ago. Alan, Samwise, Brandon Howe, But European glory counts for nothing in the Rumbelows Cup. The Spurs find out at Swansea in the last round. And Gilligan. Oh yes! Oh yes, it be! Jimmy Gilligan! Don't know how it's anything really, but today it's sort of a no-win situation. If we do actually win the game, then everyone will say, well, he should win anyway. And if we don't, then we'll, we'll, we'll get crucified. But, uh, no, it's about attitude. If we get our attitude right and play as, as we can do, we should be OK. But we know they'll be charged up. It's a big game for them. They'll have the crowd out behind them, and it, it won't be easy out here. It's a big occasion. Certainly won't worry Grimsby. They've already put out Aston Villa, Dave Gilbert's confidence from the penalty spot, and the reflexes of Steve Sherwood. Vastly experienced and ready tonight for anything Tottenham throw at him. Well, obviously, we've got a great way with this um, attitude, is what we did at Villa, and uh, hopefully, we get a, a result and a win tonight. I think that would disappoint one or two of you, Pamela, wouldn't it? Well, the, the lads are Spurs fans, but they'll be behind me tonight, no doubt about that. <laughs> Dave, you were the man who did it down at uh, Villa Park. Is it going to be another one for you tonight, do you think? I hope so, yeah. I hope no one can hold out. I'm just looking forward to the game, to be honest. What's the message going to be from the manager? Well, he's relaxed as all week, you know, we've had a good preparation today and he just hopes we play our football and do ourselves proud and if we play to our capabilities we've got a good chance of getting a result tonight. Well, it's the biggest crowd at Grimsby for 12 seasons and unlike the last round, it's straight knockout. There's no second leg. Your commentator, John Helm. 
Alan Buckley has the full Grimsby squad at his disposal for selection and he welcomes back John Cockrell, the man whose goals clinched promotion to the second division in May after absence through a pelvic problem. His inclusion in preference to Tom Watson is the only change to the side beaten at Blackburn on Saturday. Gary Childs has fond memories of this competition. He was a member of the Walsall team that advanced to the semi-final stage seven years ago before succumbing to Liverpool. Spurs 2 make one alteration to a side beaten at the weekend. Peter Shreves looks the top of his midfield by restoring David Howells in place of Naeem. The team still includes six internationals in the starting lineup and two more on the bench. A few of the Spurs lads have ever been to Cleethorpes. Indeed, this is the first time the sides have come across one another for over 40 years. And tonight's referee, who comes from Coventry, is Karen Barrett. So quite a night of Rumbelow's action in prospect and later we'll have highlights from the rest of the cup programme for you. And it will be Spurs who attack the pontoon end first with Paul Fitcher heading the ball solidly away to Gilbert who will ferry up and down that left-hand side of the touchline. Spurs know that Grimsby are likely to throw everything, including the kitchen sink, at them in the opening stages. So they'll be looking to hold the fire and then come out themselves. And there's one man who helped to quell it, the uh, England man Gary Mabbott. Well, yet again it dropped a matter of feet away and here's Lineke just on the edge of the area, Howells straight against Fletcher, Howells again, sliced away by Lever, that's a corner for Tottenham their first and all this pressure is coming about directly from the boot of Eric Torsford the Spurs goalkeeper is landing his clearances right on the edge of the Grimsby penalty area and they're disconcerting Samways, left footed one at the near post, it's longer than that though Lovely ball back to Samways, and this is impressive. Allen. Sedgley. Now Lineker was always going for it, Sherwood was always going to get there before him. And he tests his uh, length and direction there on the clearance. And it's well picked up by Reese. he did really well then, and he's fed Gilbert on the left-hand side. Gilbert waiting for support to arrive in the penalty area. Chips the ball across, here comes Torsten together. With well, Woods coming in, it's an advantage when you're six feet four. And that was a lovely build-up with the Reese's pass. Grimsby do play good, deliberate football. And Gilbert biding his time, choosing the moment for the cross. And when it came, Torsten reacted admirably. And this is Grimsby coming through. Oh, and trick. And that's certainly going to be uh, a booking I would have thought. Tony Reese there had really tricked his man and all that Sesley could do in that situation was to bring the man down. Reese was on a clear run to go and this is contentious. He was the last defender in line but it's a yellow card from referee Barrett. Masterful play by Tony Reese to carry him into that position and Sesley booked in the opening 10 minutes of the game. Gilbert stands on it and the shot is from Childs. Woods still trying to get it through to Cockrell, can't do so, and Tottenham break. Excellent work from the skipper Cunnington. Well, one by the corner from Lineker and he sets Cunnington trying to go through the middle. Reese, delightful skill again from Reese, and he's still tussling for it. Eventually there were two ways first men around and a bit of pistol cuff now. That's unnecessary. Both uh, Sedgley and Howells were there. It's Sedgley who seems the more annoyed over Howells has got a set look on his face. And there will be another booking here. Well, it's to be hoped from Tottenham's point of view that it's Howells and not Sedgley. Uh, it was involved, but it's Reese, first of all, who referee Barrett speaks to. And uh, Reese is the man who will incur a yellow card. Well, 
ball. Is the Barrett have worked with anybody from Tottenham? Not so. So two players already booked. Reese of Grimsby and Sadly of Spurs. And there's a bit of needle developing. And over on the far touch line, Pat Van Den Howe was talking with the linesman. And Doug Charmley, the linesman over there, has something to say about Van Den Howe's conduct here. The referee Barrett is going to have to be strong. Now what's he going to do? Gary Mabbott has gone over to inquire as the captain about what it's all about. This could be trouble for the Welsh International. Spurs had Gordon Dewey sent off on Saturday at West Ham. And the inference here is that we've got another card, but it's a yellow one again. So three bookings, two for Spurs, one for Grimsby. And this is Vanden Howe, Sedgley and Reese are going to have to tread gingerly from now on. Let's get back to the football with another punt up field. It's not really been an edifying first half. Childs. Good linking. That goes down the right this time. Tries to get his square around Edinburgh, can't do so. Free kick again against the Spurs man. He was in a, a no-win situation there. He had to block his man out. And the only way he could do so with the, was with the body. Grimsby's free kick here. Gilbert on the left foot. Oh, short and too short and intercepted and giving Diori the chance to come back at Grimsby's throat just when it was their opportunity. Slows it up, still Diori on and whips the shot in as well. Two feet wide of the right upright. He says it took a deflection, the referee says it didn't. And all that because Grimsby tried to be too clever from the free kick. Jury able to sprint away and leave the field scattered behind him. He'd got men coming up on his right, but chosen then to do it all himself. And when he finally lashed the shot in, it, it was that close. need a bit of breathing space and the only way they can get it for the moment is to play it back to the Norwegian goalkeeper that's a good header from Diori he's found Lineker here and Diori invited to run on and might try one with the left foot and he's teeing up Howells and Howells has scored for Spurs just what Tottenham needed to settle themselves First division finishing for you. Jury really inviting David Howells to celebrate his return to the side here. Lovely slip pass from him. And he slides it in with the instep wide of Sherwood. And Spurs are in the lead. And David Howells has his first goal of the season. He only played in the reserves against Arsenal on Saturday. And it's his first goal for almost exactly a year. And didn't he strike it clinically? Exactly 10 years since Spurs last reached the uh, League Cup final. It was known under a different name in those days, of course. They've won the competition twice. And Grimsby have reached the fifth round twice. Grimsby are already going to make a substitution while you see that uh, Spurs have got an injury problem of their own. Paul Butcher, who's been playing with stitches in the head wound he's going to take his leave of the game and he will be replaced by Mark no he won't he'll be replaced by Tommy Watson Mark Smith is the other substitute but it's Tommy Watson who's coming on and uh, interesting move this looks as though John Cockrell is going to move into the back four 
injury to Edinburgh here, picked up in this challenge. It's quite a solid run, he was just caught on the back of the neck. But not maliciously. So Edinburgh's okay. to look to catch Tottenham on unawares. So they've just not been able to extract full value when they've had the opportunity. Really monopolising possession at times. Greece lays it off delightfully well. Woods is able to keep it in but do no more than nudge it into the path of Van den Howe. And Spurs adept at retaining possession. Do that. Has support down his left from Edinburgh. Up the middle from Lineker. Oh, that's a great ball in, and this is a great chance as well for Spurs to make it too. And an excellent covering tackle by Sean Cunnington to keep Howells at bay. He did the captain's job that time. Spurs just looked that bit more incisive. Placing Saturday's fourth round draw back in tonight's winners. Howells there has got the one goal so far. Sam Willis with the corner kick. Sherwood will gather it surely. Very surely. Oh. Well, Sedgley didn't need to clear that. To Osford was surely asking for the ball. Challenge on Dury, hard enough to want a free kick. Only how? Lineker. He found a man, although didn't seem to direct it exactly where he wanted. The Spurs make progress. With difficulty. No comment necessary. Buffy Barrett has uh, glanced at his watch, decided there's still time to be played on. We're now moving into time added on for injuries. In the first half that was disappointing for the first uh, 25 minutes or so was picked up certainly since Howell's opening goal which came just after the half hour the throwing long and Stewart can't get there so Gilbert will take it away from the danger zone and that in fact is half time here at Blundell Park so the side separated by one goal but Spurs really have looked the more incisive of the two teams and a probably good value for it David Howell's got that goal just after half an hour and that gives us a half-time score here of Grimsby Town nil, Tottenham Hotspur 1. So the second half begins at Blundell Park and Grimsby certainly have it all to do. The goal down against one of the top teams in the country but in front, we'll be delighted to know of one of the biggest crowds for years, over 17,000. Well, the last time Gary Lineker played here was uh, in 1983 when Groves beat Leicester 2 0. Leicester's strikers were Lineker and Alan Smith, and the papers were full of talk of a future England international, Kevin Drinkle of Grimsby. They got it wrong. Can Grimsby get it right in this second half? Pierce for handball, or to get it right, Grimsby have brought on a substitute. Mark Smith has been brought on in place of Kevin Jobling at left back. Another interesting switch by Alan Buckley. And here at Grimsby inside this first penalty, hour, uh, penalty area. And I would certainly like to have been a fly on the wall in the Grimsby dressing room to hear what uh, Mr Buckley had to say to the troops. How are they going to unlock the Spurs door? Childs now. Good ball through, but it's uh, just that bit wide of Woods. Nonetheless, the idea was good. Again, the Spurs man first to the ball. He reacted well. Stewart rides 
the challenge of Cunnington and goes forward for Stewart who's strong Lineker Dually on the volley and it's just put out of play by Smith getting in in front of Lineker and Gary Lineker so often squeezes the ball across the line from two or three yards out and that's exactly where he was lurking it's been an unproductive night for the England man so far you're writing off at your peril Dewey taking on throwing responsibilities for Spurs Mabbitt's up there through to Sherwood and the goalkeeper's continuing to see a lot of the ball Mabbitt unable to force it through side will want a replay that's for sure Grimsby already have two or three matches to fit into their busy program Spurs are due in Portugal next week so a replay of this match will be in a couple of weeks time again that Grimsby uh, great repel so it's Lineker coming forward sliding it through Dury excellent play and off the post it comes and Dury so unlucky and once more, this newfound partnership, Spurs have got with Lineker and Dury working almost to perfection. Only the width of that upright denied them. Gilbert, when they accepted the free kick, lays it down for Tony Rees inside the Tottenham penalty area. He turns and tries to lay the ball in here. Watson shot. He tries to get the follow-up and it's knocked out of play by Sedgley. And the Grimsby Roar goes up for almost the first time. More Grimsby pressure from the floor in here. Taken by Smith. Cunnington comes to support. A little ball through for Gilbert, but the return is too weak. Gilbert, this is good for Grimsby. Gilbert, oh, good ball in too. And the header out, only drops at the edge of the area. So Childs tries to turn the screw again. And uh, once more it's intricate and just can't get that final pass through. And uh, now a free kick has gone for Tottenham. Well, a few moments ago it could have been 2-0. Tottenham's turned to lose possession. Lazily. McDermott, Reese. No free kick this time. Almost one back. Now it is McDermott coming through. Almost getting it into the inside right channel occupied by Woods. Childs, this is much better from Grimsby. If only that final ball was better. McDermott, that's an excellent pass. Child seeing a lot of the ball at the moment, tries to get around Edinburgh, plays the cross in behind for a goal kick. And well, that gives us a chance to look at the moment when Spurs could so easily have gone two goals to the good. Gordon Dury taking it on from Lineker, slashing the, score, the shot across the face of goal and back off the inside of the upright. He always appeared to be at full stretch somehow, but uh, now Smith takes it on from Woods. He's passed his man, delightful play by Mark Smith, and not a bad cross! Oh, and it's turned behind at the far post by Howells. He needed the nearest deflection there as Rhys came diving in for it. Lovely piece of work by uh, Mark Smith, those were first division skills all right. Across the face of Torsmith's goal, Rhys couldn't get the touch. 
Gary Childs will try his luck. Oh, it's a great effort from Thorsten. Flips it over the top. And Gary Childs, the man who played in a Littlewoods Cup final as it was seven years ago, almost marks this occasion with what would have been a splendid goal. Good strike. Again, it'll be uh, Tom Watson on the right foot. Cockrell, and here's a chance. What a wonderful save it is from Woods. He's headed by Torsberg. That's kept Spurs in the lead, and it was a brilliant reaction stop from the Norwegian. Grimsby continue to come at Spurs. They're giving them a good game, all right. And here is another shot, and it takes the deflection. There's no way Torsberg would have stopped that one from uh, Tommy Watson. The deflection took it wide for the latest Grimsby corner. And I think that Jeffrey Barrett was having words with David Howells for some reason. And David Howells, who ran the gauntlet a little bit in the first half, has been booked and he's the third Spurs player caution on the night. Spurs are in a spot of bother here as Pimsley have a corner. Cunnington stops it with the header. Flies wide of the upright. Cross came in there, it was uh, down there for Neil Woods' header and what a brilliant and brave stop by Torsted. Tottenham's throw it. Lever knocks it out as far as Samways. And an intelligent header from him and a little ball from Brandon Howe. Not to set Alan free. Spurs get no more than a throw in. So Really threatened Sherwood's goal much in this half, apart from that one effort by Dewey. A free kick is awarded. Lineker winning it. The substitute for Tottenham Hotspur then is Goodney Bergson, the Icelandic international. He's replaced David Howells. The Spurs have a free kick and it's a tricky one. He's just getting his toe to it in time, but the whistle sounds in Grimsby's favour. Bergson goes into uh, central defence. More pressure will be applied here by Grimsby with Childs nicking the little ball inside. Desperate defending at times by Tottenham in this half. And certainly that save by Torsford from the header by Woods, the highlight of the night. Grimsby win it. Childs on the ball. Nice to turn back by Reese. Using the chest well, Woods goes on and plugs it through. Gilbert will drive the shot in and another stop by Torsted. Well, this giant goalkeeper really is winning the acclaim of the Grimsby fans tonight. There's a fine shot by Gilbert, he hit it first time. And the keeper produced the perfect reaction. It's another Grimsby corner. They've had enough in the second half. They haven't done anything with any of them as yet. Childs. And again, he's creating problems. So that time there were just too many around him. Some ways, the back pass cut off. Getting himself into a spot of bother. And he's rather fortunate to have got away with that. But he's not gone out of play even yet. Extraordinary interlude this. That time uh, there was a whistle. And it will be a goal kick. Grimsby have created certainly more chances in this second half. What a lovely build-up it was as well, with Reese and Woods there. And eventually the ball coming across to David Gilbert. But watch out for Torsfer's reaction now, as Gilbert smashes it in. He's a big man and gets down superbly. 
Well, he might think of doing more by himself this time. Here he is. Two hits with Dury. Still Dury who gets past Smith easily. Oh, that was good play by the Scottish international Jordan Dury. It required Cockrell to come across and do a centre half defending to deny him the space he needed. And uh, Steve Sherwood in the Grimsby goal has been largely redundant for this uh, second half. Apart from one effort from Gordon Dury, he now has to face a corner. Someone knows in front of him to face it too. Short for Allen. Good ball back for Allen. Just that touch too long for him. But uh, Tottenham is still here with Stewart and the ball over the top. Lineker's in. And that's typical Lineker. A goal out of absolutely nothing for Gary Lineker. And that surely has won the tie for Tottenham and killed off Grimsby's challenge. How many times have we seen this? Paul Stewart looping the ball over the top. There seemed to be little harm, but a simple stretch of the right leg by Gary Lineker has sent Tottenham into a two-goal lead. Gary Lineker's 17th goal of yet another productive season, and that might be good enough to take Tottenham through to round four. Paul Walsh will now replace Paul Allen. Here again we see it. Paul Allen tussling for it. The ball had come out, not backed in here. Stewart looping it across. Lineker timing the run to perfection, as he always seems to do. And now he can afford to smile a little. It's not been an easy night for them. And another international Paul Walsh enters the fray. It's a dangerous ball. Grimsby's trying to make something of it. Again with Childs, lovely pass. Gilbert this time. Might lead the early ball in. Well, the challenge of the second defender, Van Den Howe, was a bit fierce. I don't think Gilbert himself complained. But Van Den Howe in trouble again. He was booked in the first half for leaving the field without permission. I think uh, he gets strong words, but no more for this. Let's have a look at it. He always uh, challenges strongly. There is Gilbert on the ball. Landon Howe going in. Gilbert trying to step over the top of him. But it's no more than a talking to for Pat Landon Howe. What a hard man of the game. Childs, free kick for Grimsby. who need a goal, but they're jostling overzealously. He's found Dury, and he gets on into the penalty area. He's airing in there, his Lineker, to try to get the return, if it should be forthcoming. It might, but not just yet. There he is again, however. Gilbert's interception. And now Gilbert and Grimsby, a lot of movement up front. Can he pick out the right man? Brilliant ball. Plays Watson in. The covering uh, player is Stewart, who's got as much in defence as he has in attacking midfield tonight. That's a nice little work. Work one, two. Oh, it was brilliantly done. And Gilbert pumps it wide. Excellent fluidity about this Grimsby attack at times. And that really was one of the better attacks of the night by both sides. And Gilbert just got the angle all wrong. But look at the excellent touches here. Reese with the layoff. Childs with the cutback. It eluded Woods, it didn't elude Gilbert, but he couldn't hit the target. Tottenham will feel they've probably got the job done now. We're inside the last uh, ten minutes, and they're two up. Uh, Leeds again 
in, but uh, Lineker just stumbling, couldn't get there. He does now, and Dury turning the defender McDermott well. Dury goes on, and on again, Lineker, Dury, and that's three, and that's splendid reward for Gordon Dury. That must have sealed it now for Spurs, and the one-two between Lineker and Dury is on his Grimsby. Dury, Lineker, and the Scottish international threading his way between the defenders and whipping it past Sherwood has sent Spurs into round at four. And Gordon Dury picks up his seventh goal of this campaign, his first for Spurs, and he really is finding an excellent understanding with Lineker as that reveals. 3-0 then, Tottenham lead, and Grimsby surely now are on their way out of the Rumbelows Cup for this season. It would be a shame if Grimsby were to be overrun now because they do not deserve that. But here is Lineker once more, and it was a fair challenge by Cockrell. It's left uh, Lineker down, but he'll pick himself up all right. And we've got to feel some sympathy for Grimsby because they really have given everything but they've been hit each time that Tottenham have struck back at them in quick flashes. They've scored three and hit the post once, and that really is more than Grimsby have been able to summon up, despite all their efforts. Five minutes to go. They're still trying. Reese, he deserves a goal, and another deflection. Here now, Charles. Surely, no words. Gilbert, can he get one? A cross on, oh, nearly knocked the man out. Great defending there by Gary Mabbott. <laughs> He's smiling. He's nearly unconscious from it. Tony Reese getting the first shot in. It came away handily uh, to Childs. This cross beyond Torsford, also beyond Woods. Here's Gilbert. And when he plays it back in, it's Mabbott who knocks it away. The corner taken, and that's Torsford's ball. There's no doubt that this season is turning out to be much more productive for Spurs away from White Hart Lane than it is on their own ground. This will be their sixth away win of the season. And they might yet add to the three goals they've got. Walsh. Some ways ahead of him. Walsh doesn't need him just yet. And it's Grimsby, all of a sudden, who are looking a little bit groggy. But their spirit will carry them through to the final whistle. Uh, it would be so nice for them if they could just get a goal as reward for all their endeavours. They deserve something. And so do the fans who've stayed here to the end. some uh, reward for Grimsby David Gilbert has been named as the Rumbelow's man of the match and he'll be the one who goes racing after this ball now to try and get some consolation for Grimsby from the throw -in. Walsh he can really uh, spring that trap this time as Dury goes on Lineker's up on the far side of the penalty area here's the ball in, it's beyond Lineker don't go out of play I don't think Contest over. Unless Grimsby produced a sort of miraculous comeback that Scarborough did at Crewe a couple of weeks ago. Somehow I don't think that's on the cards. But they'll still run for every ball. So Cunnington just overdid it that time. He uh, waits to see what damage is incurred on Gary Mabbott. Satisfied team, bench team there, led by Peter Shreves. In his second spell as Spurs manager, of course, he was in charge from 1984 to 86 when he led them to UEFA Cup glory. And the fancy we've just a couple of minutes to go. Samways, that was 
too close. Oh, we could it to find Gilbert with the return ball. Walsh. Reese, lovely play. Woods, way through the middle is Cunnington. Instead he chooses Gilbert. He will be confronted straight away by Walsh. Sosford can't get that one. Here maybe Reese. No. Again he couldn't get the angle and he stays down. Now the last thing that Groomsby wants is for Tony Reese to get injured. He's missed a number of matches with a knee injury and one hopes as we see this shot again that he hasn't uh, done himself some more damage. Reese coming in on it, twisting, going down and showing a little bit of agony as he went down on that left knee. Critical for Grimsby's ambitions that Reese is fit. Alan Buckley has only just had the uh, benefit of being able to call on uh, Reese and the rest of his first team squad, as well as all of them recently, so he doesn't want Reese out at all. And we'll finish the match by the look of it. That's good. Edinburgh. It's been quite a battle between Dury and Lever, and the youngster this time gets the free kick off the Spurs striker. Dewar is certainly one of the guys of the summer. <laughs> we just kept in by Smith. Gilbert shielding it neatly, threading it through. Watson, maybe he'll have a pot at goal, he will. Came back off somebody and I'm not sure who, whether it was his own man or a Tottenham player. But it's Walsh who brings Tottenham out and then feeds it down the line for Samways. And then how? Lineker and Walsh goes on. Tottenham looking menacing again. And Grimsby reacting promptly, but we've only succeeded in giving the ball back to the former England striker. It's run dead, however. And I think now uh, Grimsby can concentrate their thoughts on Saturday's game here against Charlton Athletic. They've certainly done themselves proud here, though. There's been uh, national exposure of all sorts on this game. And Grimsby don't really deserve to lose it 3-0. They might lose it 4-0. Dury. No more than a couple of feet wide. And he appreciated the ball through, which gave him the chance. That really would have been a travesty if Dury had made it 4-0, though, because uh, Grimsby certainly even unlucky to lose by three. It's been a fairly... Two struck in the second half by Gary Lineker and Gordon Dury were enough to take the tie away from the brave Grimsby title side who tried might and main but just didn't have the answer when Tottenham produced their clinical finishing. So it ends here with Spurs going through to round four, deservedly so. It's Grimsby Town nil, Tottenham Hotspur three. You can't ask any more of the players than mine have given me tonight. Uh, our football was better than Tottenham's in my opinion. The difference between the teams was the taking of the chances. They had four, scored three and at the post, and we had all the pressure, all the play. Our passing and movement was excellent. We looked by far a bit more accomplished football team on the night than Tottenham. But as I say, that's why people sponsor a lot of money on these, on these finishes. Uh, we knew it was going to be tough coming up here. And they did put us under pressure for long spells. But it was nice to get back in the team. Also nice to score. It was a good goal as well, a good build-up, wasn't it? Yeah, Gary and Gordon combined very well. And Gordon gave me quite a simple chance, really. Gordon, what about the partnership? Well, people are talking about it, obviously, and you're enjoying it. Yeah, obviously, it's working well with the two there. We managed to score a few goals, but the team in general is wanting better help for us as well, which is a nice thing. And stay tuned.
starting with Grimsby against the second of...